2022 was uh, a very good year, obviously, um, a watershed in terms of getting the digital bank license, which uh, made the headlines. But we did a lot of other things. Um, organizationally, I think we organized ourselves um, to be able to um, deliver on the next phase of growth. Uh, that meant getting in the right talent, um, figuring out how we organize ourselves structurally, uh, making sure that we have the right leaders in the right businesses, and also thinking about how do we expand ourselves more um, uh, as a footprint uh, outside just Malaysia and Indonesia as our co-markets. In terms of products, I think we came out with some very novel uh, products that were well received. We launched our merchant wallet. A lot of players have the consumer wallet and that's been around and gained uh, mass adoption now in Malaysia. But the merchant wallet was a new feature uh, and it's a precursor, if you like, to the bank account that we want to launch for merchants. So that came out and was very well received. It's the first of its kind in Malaysia. We launched our version of Pay Later. Pay Later hasn't really taken off uh, in Malaysia like it has in some other markets, but our version of it on our platform has been quite successful because I think we got the building blocks right. And we really focused on having a very focused product strategy. So getting the right products to the right customers at the right point in time. In terms of our financials, again, we, we continued on the path that we set for ourselves three years ago. So we grew our revenue almost uh, 2x. Uh, and we brought down our, our, our initial losses as well uh, uh, in line with kind of the mandate and our path towards profitability. So in terms of um, our overall roadmap, 2022 um, was another year in which we took another step towards achieving uh, what we want to achieve in our three to four year plan. So where we are today is in terms of um, the organization, the team, the governance structures, the technology and the product almost ready. We also have a sizable business today in lending. Uh, under Boost Credit, which will also fold into what the bank does uh, in the future. So um, while we do launch the bank, I think the 12 months uh, post-launch will also be quite exciting. So the objective of the digital banks, the licensing framework, is in itself to promote financial inclusion. Uh, if you look at the Malaysian uh, banking sector, a large part of the existing FIs cater to what we call the serve market, uh, where there's a large swath of customers that are today underserved. Uh, even though in Malaysia the real underbank segment is quite low, a lot of people don't get the full set of uh, banking services, let's say somebody in the top tier of society gets. So there is uh, a fair amount, uh, there's a large gap in the marketplace and that's something that even the regulator realize, uh, hence the digital bank licenses coming uh, out. Now, the good news for us is we have been doing parts of this already for the last three years. So we've been doing uh, micro loans through Boost Credit, for instance, uh, and we've uh, I think dispersed close to 2 billion loans in Malaysia um, to a large number of micro SMEs primarily. So um, we know firsthand that there is a gap in the market and we know that there are customers who need to be served. So some of these customers um, are what we call thin file. They don't have data. So it's impossible for a traditional bank to score them and give them loans using traditional means like asking for your income documents, etc. Um, there are some customers who do have that data, but they find the banking process quite arduous in terms of uh, submission, cycles, etc. So that's where both the use of data and AI to find new ways of scoring customers, as well as technology platforms to take the friction out of the customer experience, you know, really can play a role. And I think that's what um, we have been doing, actually. Uh, we hope to do that at a, at a larger scale. Uh, as far as the digital bank is concerned, but we've been doing uh, many elements of that in the last three years. So I think that has a very, very strong inclusive agenda because you are giving um, small businesses uh, capital for growth. Uh, you are giving small businesses greater control over their, uh, their, their financial needs and greater control over how they think about financial planning. So that, the, I think our digital bank, as will the others, play a very, very strong role in promoting inclusion in Malaysia.